Now we're going to talk about resistivity. And the idea here is that the resistance of a wire, really the resistance of anything, but typically we're talking about a wire, the resistance of it depends on the fundamental physical characteristics of the wire, specifically how long it is, how thick it is, and also what it's made of. Some materials inherently resist the flow of electricity more than others. That's another way of saying that some, some materials are better electrical insulators, or another way to say it is that some materials are more resistive than others. And the resistivity of a material is that characteristic of the material. It tells us that uh, some materials resist electricity flowing through them more than others. Now we're going to do a little derivation here that's very similar to others that we've done in this course. But follow each step. Think through each step and it should make sense. First, we're going to say this. The resistance is proportional to the length. That is, if we have a piece of wire, the longer it is, the more electrical resistance there is. And that idea should make sense if you think about it. Imagine trying to force these electrons to flow through the wire. Well, if it takes a certain amount of effort to get, to get them to flow through one meter of the wire, then it would take twice as much effort to get them to flow through two meters. So the longer the wire is, the more effort it takes to get the electrons to flow through the wire. Another idea is this. The resistance is inversely proportional to the cross-sectional area. So think about the cross-sectional area here, A. In other words, if the wire is really thin, then you're going to have a high resistance. If you have a big number here in the denominator for a, a big number for the area, which means the wire is really fat, that will give you a, a smaller resistance. So thick wires have less resistance. And that should make sense too. A good analogy is to think about cars going down the highway. If you add more lanes to the highway, that makes it easier for the traffic to flow. Making a thicker wire is like adding more lanes to the highway. You provide a bigger path, more, more places for the electrons to go, so there's less resistance. Now we can take those two ideas and combine them saying resistance is proportional to L and resistance is proportional to 1 over A, those two ideas together could be written like this. Resistance is proportional to L over A. And saying that re the resistance is proportional to this is the same thing as saying that it's equal to some constant times that. So we can say the resistance is equal to some constant times L over A. And um, if you just write the constant L over A, we, that means there's some multiplier in here, the constant of proportionality. And we typically don't call it K, we typically use the, the Greek letter Rho for resistivity. And specifically that's the resistivity of the material. Different materials have a different number right there for resistivity. So we would, we would write the equation like this, the resistance of a wire is equal to Rho L over A. So, as we said at the beginning, the resistance depends on the physical characteristics of the wire. So the resistance that you get for a piece of wire depends on how long it is, L, the cross-sectional area, A, and the material, which has a certain resistiv resistivity, rho. Now let's think about this equation again. The resistance of a wire, R, is equal to the resistivity times the length divided by the cross-sectional area. Now let's think about the units for a second. Actually, let me move this over here. Okay, think about the units here. Resistance has to be in ohms. Length we know is in meters and area is in meters squared. So the resistivity has to be in ohm meters. And you can see that if you do it that way, these two meters up here will cancel out leaving you with ohms for resistance. So the unit for resistivity is ohm meters. And here's a chart that shows the value of the resistivity for several common materials. Notice for silver and copper and aluminum and also tungsten, but especially silver and copper, these numbers are very, very small numbers. That's 1.59 times 10 to the negative eighth right there. 
So that's a very, very small number. Uh, glass, 10 to the 9th up to 10 to the 12th. That's somewhere between a billion and a trillion ohm meters. That's a huge number. And for hard rubber, the value is even bigger. 10 to the 13th up to 10 to the 15th. Those are giant numbers. And that's exactly why electricians typically wear rubber gloves, especially if they're working around high voltage uh, or dangerous amounts of electricity. Because of the high resistivity of the material, it allows very little current to flow, so it provides very good protection. And then look at silicon right in between. Most, most materials, as we've said before, have either a very low resistance or a very high resistance, but silicon, the semiconductor, is in between.